Well, welcome back, everybody, to the Hog Pod. And as always, thank you so much for checking back in. No doubt you've uh, realised that we've been off the air for uh, a number of weeks now, but we're we're back, we're up, and we're running, and we've got uh, plenty planned for the 2023 season. Uh, for this episode, we are joined by uh, Martin Coop. Many of you will no doubt know him, and he's going to be telling us the story behind and some of the details of an ambitious UK and Harley rally uh, called Chapters Together. As we know, it's the Hog 40th year and it's the Harley Davidson 120th year. And in the absence of any UK specific celebrations for Hog, uh, a number of people got together to see what could be done. Chapter members from up and down the region stepped up to the plate. And now that we're at the start of the season, we aren't too far away from this uh, potentially superb event. If you're involved in the planning of your own chapter or riding club rally, you will be well aware of the stress and time it takes to pull it off. Now, imagine the pressure on the shoulders of those who stepped up to a challenge such as this. But why is it being done? Who are the people that have taken on this huge task and what have they got planned? Well, today we are kindly joined by Martin Coots of the Three Rivers Chapters in Watford to tell us all about what you can look forward to in July this year. Welcome, Martin. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Yes, uh, thanks very much for joining us. Um, we've been some effort to try and get all of our diaries tied up here. Jared won't stop riding his bike, and me and you have been super busy. So uh, thank you so much for for spending a bit of time with us tonight. No problem at all. No, it's good to talk to you, and, um, and and well done on what you guys are doing. You know, this is this is something that's needed to be done for a long time. It's it's really good. Yeah, no, thanks very much. I think uh, a lot of people are saying that to us, so uh, we're pleased. It's uh, we, we have an aim very simply to join the dots between all the chapters within our region. So thanks very much. Um, I think what we what we always do, Martin, is uh, is ask our guests to tell us a little bit about themselves and the chapter. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your chapter? Well, I've, I've been riding since um, pretty much since I could walk. Um, started off with uh, you know all the usual stuff. Um, um, riding a bit of dirt bikes, motocross, enduro trials. Um, and then uh, I suppose when I was in my, my 40s, always dreamt of having a, a Harley, but never never something I thought possible. And then, um, uh, I, you know, I had Triumphs and I've had Hondas and I've had Kawasaki's and I've had all the, all the usual stuff. And then um, I was persuaded to have another crack at motocross um, and uh, that led to me uh, ending up with a broken collarbone and just in six pieces. Uh, and I thought that's that's got to be the writing on the wall to say you need to find something a bit more sedate. So um, so I bought uh, I bought my first Sportster, um, and uh, and sort of the rest I suppose is history. Really, I've been hooked to the brand ever since. Um, love riding it, um, and uh, uh, yeah, and it's just gone on and on from strength to strength there. In terms of the chapter, when I first started, um, so there was uh, there was a local chapter back then called the Chilton Hills chapter, which um, had lost its dealership and uh, and was sort of hanging around waiting for another dealership to come along. Uh, and then the first of the um, the Watford dealerships opened um, by uh, by a guy called um, John Tagger, and uh, and that lasted um, it lasted about three and a half four years. Um, uh, so the um, a lot of the people from the Chilton Hills chapter moved across. So I joined the chapter um, and immediately sort of got involved as uh, as a road captain and um, working on the committee. And then um, and then sort of things went on from there. And um, I, within uh, within two years, I'd been asked to be assistant director. Um, and um, the uh, the guy that, that uh, was the director at the time was a guy called Des Horwood, who. Um, uh, then announced shortly after me accepting to be direct, uh, assistant director, um, announced that he was uh, emigrating to uh, Canada. Uh, and uh, and I'd said quite clearly I really didn't want to be chapter director. Um, but uh, Des, being the persuasive person that he was, managed to land that one on me. Um, that was 18 years ago, and uh, uh, and I'm still chapter director to this day. So um, apart from... Uh, this, uh, I think I'm I'm the oldest and long, well, the, but not the oldest, but I'm probably the longest standing chapter director, um, bar one. I think Andy Coe uh, from St Ledger has got about five or six months on me. Um, chapter, well, uh, the chapter's had its ups and downs. Obviously, John Taggart's dealership didn't last very long. That went um, 
went south. So we um, we ended up being the first orphan chapter in the in the UK. Um, uh, and thanks to the support back then of um, of, of a couple of chapter directors, um, Big George uh, Mad, Mad Dog Maguire from uh, the Dunedin chapter, uh, and another guy called Les, who was the the director at the time for um, uh, the New Forest chapter. Um, they sort of fought the corner with me and Martin Dickinson as well, from who was the previous director at uh, Neen Valley. Uh, they fought my corner with me, and uh, uh, and Hogg said, well, they would continue to support us as an orphan chapter. So I think we were orphaned for about 14 years in total. Um, wow. Yeah, it ne- never really expected it to go on quite that long. Um, uh, and then, obviously, we then started to get some sort of conversations going with uh, the um, the Lind Group, um, who were uh, who'd been given permission and uh, to to open another dealership, and they were searching for for, for properties. Uh, and ironically, I suppose in some respects, um, they found a newly built premises just round the corner from where the old dealerships was was uh, situated in Watford, uh, and opened up, and we were adopted. So um, we started then to build our membership back up again, and uh, and and we continue to this day. Uh, it must have been quite a struggle over all those years trying to keep the thing together. It was it was challenging, um, and it was you know people would say, oh, you know, well, how do you recruit members? Well, we didn't really recruit members. I mean, we did our membership did did obviously dive. You know, we we were at one point we were three hundred, and then over a period of the of the fourteen years, we dropped back to about sixty five. But but you know, you guys will know the same. You know, if you if you've got a chapter, it doesn't matter whether you've got 100 or, or 300 members, you're probably going to see 65 to 70 members regularly at v- events. They'll support you. They'll support the ride outs and so on. Um, and we were just lucky because we kept the, 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 the 65 members that were busy and wanted to be involved. Um, and we became sort of fiercely protective of the chapter. You know, we, we would come hell or high water. We wasn't going to let this chapter, you know, pack up and go. Um, and we knew that one day, you know, somebody would come along and they would open up a dealership. And hopefully, as long as we kept everything running along hog lines, um, we would be adopted and uh, and we'd, be, we'd go forward. But, you know, still when we even were adopted, though, um, we we I put it to the members before we did, you know, before we actually went through the adoption process because I wanted it to be their decision. I didn't want it to be my decision, but... I felt that it was the right thing. I'd obviously told them my thoughts on it, and it, it was the best way that we were going to bring new blood into the club. But you know, we we did we did pick up the odd new member who joined us because they saw us out riding, and um, you know they wanted to be involved. Um, so you know, we, and we've kept that nucleus of really tight members who sort of know each other, know our riding styles, enjoy each other's company, uh, and it's it's become infectious. You know, the new members that are coming in, we're getting. A lot of them getting really involved real quick, which is great. Um, and, you know, and we're going from strength to strength, and it's great. It really is. Given your geographical position and, you know, the size of the population in and around where you would be, I can't believe that it was that long before you managed to get a dealership again. No, you could understand if it was, you know, middle of nowhere, low footfall, low density population. But, I mean, your way would be huge numbers of people. Yeah, it, it, to be honest, Kenny, it was it was purely and simply down to to economics. You know, um, they they wanted the area to sort of the Watford area was the was the target. I mean, they would they, they were looking at sort of Stevenage and places like that as well. Uh, and, it, and in fact, we very nearly did have a dealership in Stevenage, but the um, the the owners of the property didn't want a motorcycle um, outlet there, so that, that sort of put the Put the um, stops on that, but um, you know, to, to get a place in Watford, you're 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 so close to to the sort of the, the London area that, yeah. that that landlords and, and owners of buildings want that kind of you know that kind of revenue coming back in. So, it, so it was fortunate that, that the new premises is good. It's really nice, but and it's a, a, a dual site, so it's it's Triumph on one side and, and Harley on the other. Uh, and that works, you know, because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of, of connections between the, the, the Triumph brand uh, and the Harley brand, you know, l- not least the adventure bike market, but they've also, you know, the um, they've got some cruisers out there as well now that, that uh, kind rock- of fit the bill. The big rocket. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of um, 
There's a lot of sort of symbiosis between the two brands, so it, it works well together. And some people and is it Lind? Is it Lind yeah, yeah. for both of them? Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's Lind, uh, and they have a joint workshop in the middle, kind of the, the the party wall, if you like, is down the middle of the workshop. You've got Triumph lifts on the right, and you've got the Harley lifts on the on the left hand side. So it, it's uh, it's kind of kind of fun, and, and you get people crossing brands. You know, we've had people that have bought Triumphs and didn't like them, didn't get on with them, took them back, and got walked in next door and bought a, a Harley. And, and similarly, we've had people that have done the opposite. So. Doing the other way around. Yeah, yeah, there. absolutely. Oh, very good. But yeah, dealership's doing well, and, and that's always good for the chapter. Um, you know, you need to grow together. So, what, what about you, Martin? How long have you been riding Harleys? So, I I, uh, I got my first Harley, which would have been in uh, two thousand and one. So, I, I started with a with a Sportster. Um, I, I vividly remember riding it down to. Um, uh, to Brightona, um, and uh, when I got there, it, it, I'd have happily sold it to anybody who wanted to buy it off of me and caught a train home, because um, the, the, the suspension back then was um, was interesting to say the least. I I didn't know a lot about what I could change and shouldn't and wouldn't do, and uh, so I you know I didn't change all the, the anything up on it, and I just literally rode it down there, and I thought, God, I can't ride this bike anymore. Um, I rode it home. Uh, and then I thought to myself, um, a soft tail is the way to go. So I bought a, a, a really nice um, red and silver uh, heritage soft tail. And I love that bike, did loads of miles on that. But then on a, on a trip to France, um, I, I realised that actually I think I could probably go for something a little bit bigger. So I came back and changed up to a, to a Road King. Um, again, loved the bike, rode it all over the place. Um, went down to, uh, it would have been to the Winter Ball that the uh, New Forest chapter used to run back then. Um, happened, happened to go into um, Southampton, uh, Harley-Davidson, um, Dot Gate as it was back then, and uh, uh, fell in love with um, with an Ultra Limited. Um, went back a week later and bought it. Um, and again, I had that bike for a long time. I probably had that bike for five or six years. Uh, did loads of miles on it. Did a lot of miles around Europe and stuff, uh, and it was, you know, it was, it was a good, a good bike. Um, not everybody's cup of tea. Cause it was, it was pure white, and, uh, and it used to get people sort of, um, oh, you know, why would you buy a white Harley? Um, but why so, would you not? Exactly, yeah, and it was a lovely pearlescent white as well. So you know, it proper lovely. probably popped in the sunshine. So um, it always looked good, um, and then. Uh, that started to get a little bit old and I started to get a few grumbles and bits and pieces from the engine and I, I think I had final drive bearings went on it and, and I thought, do you know what, it's time for a change. Um, and I bought late into the um, uh, the Rushmore engine when the Rushmore engine came in and it was, and it was probably in its last year before the, the, um, uh, the Milwaukee 8 came through. Um, had that bike and I've I, I got to say, I was disappointed with it. Again, you know, another Ultra. Um I had problems with it right from the start. I had, um, you know, oil leaks and all sorts of crazy stuff, and I never really, really sort of um, fell in love with the bike. But that year, the um, I did a trip to to the US, picked the bikes up, um, and because I was a chapter director going out there, it was the week after the um, all the directors and all of the dealer principals had been out there to to sample the Milwaukee Eight. So yeah. um, we picked the bike up. Um, and uh, they said, oh, we've decided to give you a Milwaukee 8. They're not on the hire fleet yet, but we'd like you to, to ride one as a chapter director, and would you write something when you get back to the UK? So, yeah, why not? Why wouldn't I? Fair deal. Um, yeah. I rode the Milwaukee 8. Um, we did a couple of thousand miles around New England, um, and by the time I got back, I think I'd had my other bike eight months, so I put it up straight back up for sale and said I needed to trade up to the – to the Milwaukee Eight. Um, wow, that much of a difference, eh? Oh, yeah, it was day and night. You know, um, especially as I'd had the problems with the other one as well. It kind of, you know, you 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 fall in love with these things, but you can very quickly fall out of love with them, and they start to give you a lot of grief. Um, you need to you need to connect with them, don't you? If you don't yeah, you connect do. with it, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's and that's exactly what you what you're saying is right. That's exactly how I felt. I never connected with a bike. I never felt properly comfortable on it 
um, and and I was quite pleased. And the, the final straw, I guess, was um, I come back from a from a French trip. I think we'd done the Millau Bridge, um, and I came back and um, and I noticed they were weeping around the base gaskets of the of the, the barrels. Um, stopped off in a dealer's. The first dealers that came back and said, "Can you just have a look at this and see what you think?" Uh, and they said, "Oh well, that's got to be um, engine out, you know, barrels off and." Um, and that, and I, they, they had the bike while I was in the States, but when I came back, they still hadn't managed to get it done and they had to send for some special gaskets and stuff because it was basically the castings were, were poor. Um, and I thought, that no, that's it. That's got to go. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I certainly didn't make any money out of the deal, that's for sure. But, mm. um, but it got me on a, on a Milwaukee 8 um, uh, and I loved that bike and I kept that for three years. Um, so uh, yeah, and then I've kind of been stuck on on ultras ever since. So I, I went from that to a uh, to a CVO CVO ultra, um, rode that for. And going back to your thing about connecting with bikes, um, I never really felt that I connected with that bike. Don't know why. It was slightly higher heat seat height, and I think that probably made it it feel a little less comfortable. Never really felt as though I was properly part of the bike. Um, but I, I kept it for about um, about 18 months, two years. Uh, and then a very clever person at the dealership said to me while it was being serviced, um, have you ridden a road glide recently? And I said, no, I've only ridden one way back when they were unpopular before, you know, when they were like the thing that nobody wanted. Um, and he said, oh, you should take one out. So um, take it out whilst your bike's being serviced. So uh, the next thing I'm online looking and uh, – and I bought. Um, I ended up buying a, a um, Wicked Orange um, Ultra. Uh, sorry, Ultra. Um, not the Ultra Road Glide. The pure Road Glide with the lowered seat and the lowered bags and everything. Uh, and I just just love the bike to pieces. It's just it feels so comfortable. I just love riding it. It's it just makes you smile all the time. Yeah, we've. Uh, I think we had this on previous episodes, particularly if you remember Jared with uh, with Vanessa Rock. She says uh, they're very sneaky the way they do it in Harley. All they've got to do is get the bums on a seat. If they get if, you, if they get your backside on that seat and you take it out, it's like being told, "Oh, go and have a look at a puppy." But if you don't want it, don't get it, you know. And yeah. of course, you're sold hook, line, and sinker. Especially if you're like us that, that are bought into the brand anyway. You know, it's it's not like it's not like it's a hard sell, is it? Really? Now, let's let's be honest. I've 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 got three Harleys now, um, and I've and. The, the third one, I had to go and rent another garage to put it in because I haven't got space in the garages that I've got. So, you know, that's the sort of crazy thing you do. Well, at least it didn't stop you. That's good to see. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's it's horses for courses, you know, different bikes for different people. I mean, within the last two or three weeks, I mean, I went up and I uh, t- took out for a test drive. It was the dealership open day here about three weeks ago. Yeah. And I had convinced myself I wanted to go up a notch because I read a heritage myself. Um, and I absolutely convinced I was going to go up a notch. So I went up and I tested the Road King and the Electric Glide. Um, for me now, I felt that the Road, Cl- the Road Glide for me was probably a bit too big and very heavy for me. And then I've, I mean, I've only 29 inch legs, so trying to get my feet to the ground was now on impossible. The electric light I found was a lot lighter and a lot easier to throw about. But then when I come back off it again, I went, you know something, you know, the Heritage has everything that I want. You know, I'm a solo rider. You know, I, I never go, you know, I never, I'll never have a pillion. Um, so for what I want out of it, the the, the Heritage was, was just an amazing bike, you know. So I'm probably one of the only people who didn't put their bum on a, on a Harley in the dealership and not get sold it. <laughs> It's not like you to break the mold, Jared. <laughs> not like me at all. No, no it's not. So, Martin, you um, you, you've uh, been involved in in chapters together, and uh, listen, I, I'm dying to get I'm dying to get get tucked into this and ask you some questions. So, um, the uh, chapters together. Tell tell us a little bit about how it came about and the reason as to why and and. Uh, and what's coming up. And if you don't mind me and Jared, are no doubt going to bombard you with questions afterwards. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem at all. Um, it, it's kind of um, one of these weird things, really. Um, 
a member, a guy that was a member of the chapter um, and, uh, and drifted away for whatever reason. Um, but we stayed in touch, uh, and he was in the in the business anyway. He was um, he was a, um, a salesman at one of the um, a, a Triumph dealers in, in the finish. I kind of kept in touch. His cousin's still a member of the chapter, and we, we talk regularly. Um, and he just um, dropped me a, a message, uh, probably about six or eight months ago, and said, um, uh, "I'm involved with this um, these group of people, and they're they're, they're putting on events." Um, and they want to put a bike event on, so they've come to me and said, "Do you know any people that you should get that you know we need, we could get involved to give us some guidance?" Um, so he said, "I thought you know maybe you'd be interested." And he said, "I've also spoken to um, to Simon Barron from um, Neem Valley." So um, he said, "You know, would the two of you come down and, and have a chat with us?" So um, I said, "Yeah, you know, always happy to talk to somebody about you know events and stuff." So. Um, we went there, we had an initial conversation, and then we sort of said, he said, well, come and see the venue. So um, we went to the to the um, the venue, which is, it, it's, it's in essence, it's an equestrian venue, um, mm-hmm. not a million miles from where I live, didn't know it even existed. Um, and they said that um, they'd put an event on last year, and unfortunately it was on that, that really, really hot day in July last year, um, and it was uh, a, a festival, like a family festival, uh, and the chap that owns it has um, basically said he just he wants to organise a festival. He wants to make it good. He's brought in a, a, pr- a proper um, organiser who, who can set all this stuff up. They run regular equestrian events there, show jumping. They've got a massive indoor arena which holds about three and a half thousand people, plus horses and all that sort of stuff. Um, loads and loads of buildings and loads and loads of flat land, and it's in the middle of nowhere. So it's got sort of you know it, it's, it's a perfect location. So. Um, we viewed the venue, and I, I literally I walked around with my mouth open. I said, "This is just absolutely incredible! It's got everything you could possibly want." Uh, and because they have uh, loads and loads of people going there with these very nice horse boxes and stuff, they've got electrical hookups, they've got water hookups, all already laid on. Um, and he, so we started talking about the event last year, and uh, and he said, "Yeah, you know, we we ran the event. We had." I think there's something like eight or nine uh, live acts on. They had jugglers and fire eaters and food stalls, all different foods from around the world. And um, uh, and then I sort of got chatting to my son, and he said to me, yeah, I went to it, Dad. He said it was brilliant, but he said, unfortunately, it was just not very well publicised and not very well attended because of the weather. So the sort of the throwback off of that is that they wanted to put that event on again this year, um, and they've learned a lot from, from what happened the previous year. But... They thought, well, if we're going to put all this stuff in, so we're going to put a stage in, we're going to build, um, uh, you know, all the facilities that are needed. We're bringing in um, glamping, we're bringing in um, shower blocks, um, all this stuff. Why don't Why don't we put on our our family um, event, and then the following week, let's put on something just for for bikers. So um, that was the sort of the, the start of it. So. Both um, Simon and I were, you know, were really keen on it. And we said, yeah, this is you know, it's a brilliant idea. How can we, what, what can we do? How can we work with you? How can we get involved? Um, so we then decided to sort of talk to a few other chapter directors and see if other chapters would would support it if we put the event on. Um, and then we sort of brought in um, Steve Link from Welsh Dragon um, and Steve Spencer from the Mancunium chapter, who were real keen to get involved as well. Um and they're, they're two very positive guys and they're very positive about, you know, about the attitude of Hog and what we need to do and stuff. Um, so much so that they, I did a presentation to all the directors. So I've, I invited them all on a, on a Teams call, um, basically told them what we were, we were thinking about and whether we could try and make this stand up. Um, pretty much a, a unanimous support from, from every chapter director, you know, because a lot of them, yes, a lot of people are supporting the... Um, the, the, the 40th and the 120th in Budapest, um, and that's great. But there are an awful lot of people that are not making that, that journey. Um, and we felt that there needed to be something in this country that we could perhaps get together with like-minded people and, and you know, and, uh, and get involved with. So, um, as I say, the, the, the two Steves came down and met with us. We met again with the organisers, um, Chris and... Um, uh, he sort of laid out what we could, you know, he basically said, we'll do whatever you want us to do to make this event work. Uh, and then, and I was saying to these guys, you know, 
this if we can pull this off, if we can make this happen and make this work, there is there is nil cost to a chapter. Now, if if a chapter wants to put on an event of this size, you you know you've got to bankroll it because if people don't come, you've still got to pay the bands and the the hire and the lose and all that's good stuff, you know. So um, I said this is an opportunity to put on a really big event to make it really something special, and and if we can. Um, great is all we need to do is to support it, sell it to our members, sell it to the wider, you know, the wider Harley community, get them down, um, and let's see what happens. So, um, um, Steve Spencer also spoke to um, uh, Steve Kelly from from Hog and Harley. Um, Steve came down uh, and looked at it as well, and um, obviously they they are. Um, they are uh, instructed in how they what what's happening from the motor company. You know, the motor company sort of calls the shots. Let's be honest. So, um, so they said we they, we can't make it an official event, but what we will do is we'll allow you to call it, you know, a fortieth celebration for those who want to. We can't call it a one twentieth, but if you can make this work and stand this up this year, and it and it actually you know, it, it properly sells people people come to it and people want to come to it then we'll obviously give you some marketing materials and stuff to help but then going on from that maybe next year we can look at it becoming an official event uh, with a full hog backing so um yeah. so that's so it was born yeah where, where where have i heard this before it seems to be an ongoing thing with hog you know sort of you bankroll the event, you get the event rolling, and then if you get it up and rolling and everything's well and good and tickety-boo, then we'll jump on board, you know? Yeah. Um, you can sum that up in four words, Jared, can't you? Thunder in yeah, the glens. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, are, are they, I mean, are Hog, are, are they contributing anything to it, or do they have any role in the event at all? Um, no. Um, initial conversations said that if we could pre-sell... Um, got a fairly hefty lump, lump of tickets, um, uh, they would then uh, look at being able to support us. But I, I, I believe, and from the, co the conversations that we've had on the director's um, uh, calls that we, we have with um, with the, the HOG team, um, it is that that support is, is not going to amount to anything more than, than some banners and stuff. But, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> if they support it, it, the dealerships themselves will support it, so hopefully our dealership will be there, uh, and hopefully we'll we'll be able to invite a couple of other dealerships. Um, I guess by the fact that it's it's um, it's still being marketed as um, uh, as thund thunder um, fields of thunder, which is like the, the sort of the, the overhaul sort of title that we're calling it. But we've kind of marketed it ourselves within ourselves. We you know Steve got got handbills done and distributed them to all the chapters. And we pass them out, put posters up in the dealerships and stuff. So it's kind of become more Harley Davidson. I mean, we're not saying no to anybody that doesn't have a Harley. Um, and I think it'd be crazy to do so because, you know, mm -hmm. you may just persuade these people that um, actually I want some of this, you know, this social life that goes with this, the brand. Yeah. So um, so we won't turn people away. As far as our, our sort of commitment goes, you know, we, we've, I've got another meeting this week to talk to um, to Chris and that. We've had good commitment from the chapters. We've, I think we've got um, 13 chapters so far represented uh, in one way or another. Um, our members are booking in and, and as are, um, I mean, Welsh Dragon are already bringing, they've booked, I think, 32 um, tents or something already. So... And there's, there's something for everyone because, you know, there's there's glamping if, for those who just don't want to carry a tent on their bike and prefer a bit of comfort. Um, there's hotels around if you if you want to go to a hotel and, we're, and they're going to lay on mini, mini buses to, to run people in and out. Um, there's there's just pure camping pitches. Uh, there's electrical hookup for people who want to come down with a motorhome or with a, uh, with a caravan. Um, and I think they've sold out real quick. Um so we've got a good lineup of bands, uh, and these and the, the organisers they're not afraid to put the money up. You know, I talked about a couple of bands that we we said and we've seen at other places and that would would go down well, uh, and I said, but they're expensive, and I sort of said, you know, I think they're going to be sort of three or four grand. And he said, that's no problem. He said, that's fine. He said, give me the number, I'll talk to them. 
see, they're a business, aren't they? So they understand the need. Yeah. That, uh, acor- um, acorns turn into oak trees. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this year, uh, so whenever we spoke to guests previously, you know, we always ask about their rally, et cetera. And, you know, and mo- most of us are in a position now where our rally is well established. Everyone knows what happens. Every, you know, everyone knows uh, w- roughly when it is in the year and they plan their their calendar accordingly. Um, this is very, very different because you've uh, you've literally picked it up and, and, and grown it from, from the out. And uh, I do, uh, obviously, Jared said there about the the support from Hogan. You know, it's uh, I think it's fair to say this is very much uh, individuals within chapter generated. It's, it isn't a Hog event. Yeah. Um, the and I mean, and, I, and I've I've sort of made this point a number of times, and some people are with me, and some people uh, are not with me. But you know, because of Hog, not due to hog because of them we do have the, an audience don't we where you know we don't need hog to be able to speak to the you know the 30 odd chapters here in the uk and ireland you know you can pick up the phone to stevie in manchester you can pick up the phone to any of the guys over uh, over here at, and that audience is there for you yeah. and i think you know for anyone that's considering going to this event particularly anyone that says, oh, you know, there's never anything for us here in the UK and Ireland. This is really a great opportunity to make this year work. It sounds like you have put a lot of hard work into it. I was, you know, and I've got loads of questions about that, as does Jared. But, you know, um, just to get it out from the off, this is the year to get involved because when it works this year, when it does really, really well, this is something that hopefully you will have the stomach to to do again and again and again. And this could become another another event for everybody yeah, as opposed I, to a, a chapter rally. I mean, for anyone that's not organising yeah. this, this is great. You yeah. just rock up. Organising, as you know, we've all, we've all done it, um, you guys included. You know, organising a rally is not an easy thing. Um, but we, we started running an event about three years back. But actually, we started it the year before covid um, so there was a little event that went on where we ha- we have our chapter meetings, and um, and it was a, a, a date in the diary that the um, the National Chopper Club used to to hold a little event on, um, and they decided they didn't want to do it anymore. So the the people where we we meet at the British Legion, they said, um, "Do you want the date? Um, you know, do you want to do something with it?" So I said, um, "Yeah, you know, we could. Let's let's have a look at what we could do." I said, "But I don't I don't want to do it as a fundraiser. I want to do it as a as a charity fundraiser." So, um, so uh, we we started to um, to look into it. So we said, "Well, let's 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 run it as a one day event on a Sunday, a bike festival, uh, and it's going to be about promoting safe motorcycling, sensible motorcycling, and showcasing all the good stuff that bikers do. That the people who you know cross the street to avoid you when you're walking down the road and things like that don't get." So, um, so we started running the, the Harpenden Bike Fest, and we, we we ran it the first year. It was it was great. It was a bit of a sort of suck it and see thing. Um, we spoke to the to the local council, the town council, who gave us full permission to use the the green in the middle of the town, um, yeah. and uh, and we had quite a nice little event. And we probably raised three or four thousand pounds. Time we've got paid our overheads. So um, obviously, then COVID came along, so that sort of put the the kibosh on it for a bit, but. We then started again, so we ran it again last year, uh, and we did sort of similar sort of business, but you know, learn a lot of mis- learn a lot of the things from from what we've done um, in previous years and try to improve it. Now we said we're going to run that again this year, um, uh, and we we'll try to see. You know, we, the idea is to grow it and see if we can make it into something quite special. But we, there's limitations. Uh, you know, people keep saying to me, well, "Could we come down early and camp?" I, I haven't got the facilities for that. I've got a common, but it's it's you know they, they don't want a load of bikers turning up and, and, and putting tents up on it, so that's a no. Um, we we if we move the bands from out of the British Legion, we've got to put in generators and a stage, and then we've got to put in extra toilets and stuff. So there's a limit to where we can go with it, but but we're, we're still going to run it this year. But I think if if this um, chapters together really really starts to take off. Um, I think we'll probably stop that, and we'll we'll just put all our our efforts into making this a success. You know, the the the, the sofa rally started in a in a similar sort of way, 
Um, but again, the, but it, with that, you didn't have the benefit of an organising, you know, a, a group of organisers behind you. Basically, they're doing all the donkey work for you. You know, they're doing all the hard graft, the hard lifting. They're bringing all the stuff in. They're underwriting the toilets and they're underwriting the stage and the the um, undercover area for where the bikes are going to be stored. And um, you know, and even we've talked about you know if there's if the weather spoils it. Well, hell, we can move inside and use the arena, um, and we, we can still go ahead. You know, we still don't we don't need to lose the event for bad weather. That was going to be one of my questions, actually. So, um, obviously, so late late and buzzard, isn't it? Um, yeah, so it's a little village called Slapton. Um, is, Slapton. is the actual the location. Um, and yeah. it's, it's, so you're far you're far enough south to not be cursed with the the, the northern weather where I'm from. But um, in, in the event of, of it being an absolute washout weather-wise, and I think you've just answered it there, I take it there is somewhere that you can use that arena. Are, are they putting boards down or are yeah, they, they going to just use the sand? Or? They, um, they, they roll the sand and then they lay, a, lay boards over the top of it. So they, they, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what this stuff is that horses run around on, but it's sort of sandy-looking stuff. And they, they, mm. um, they compress it flat and then they put boards on the top of it and it's... Um, you know, it, it, it becomes a firm floor. Um, Brilliant. And as, and you say capacity-wise, it would be, it sounds like it would be more than enough for... Yeah, know, with a, with that area, a I mean, rally. That it's, you know, they, they, it's big enough for them to hold full, full-blown full show jumping events in there. Uh, there's two restaurants that overlook it. Um, there's tiered seating in there. Um you know, it's got everything you want. There's there's even two restaurants in there. There's a there's a like an upstairs and a downstairs. You can go in there and have your breakfast and stuff. They're going to do all the breakfast on on site themselves, and uh, and they're bringing in loads of different street foods and stuff for um for the meals for the rest of the day. So, you know, so presumably the the likes of the breakfast is that a um is that like a self service type thing? Is it where because um, obviously there's going to be quite a number of people. It's not going to be table service because of, of capacity. I think the, the plan it's is like to a put, canteen style to put like several several places around uh, around the grounds where you can go and get your breakfast. So there'll be um, there is a so they're doing it on the on the previous week's event. They're doing a lot of um, cookery demonstrations. So they've got a massive tentage that's going up. Um, so a lot of it will be in there. So you can go and either get yourself a you know a breakfast bap or whatever you want, or um, yeah. uh, or you can sit down and have your, your full English if that's uh, what floats your boat. You sound like you're pretty well on in in the organisation of it, Martin. Um, but for, for for anyone for anyone who is considering or thinking or is going to it, right? Um, on the day itself, what can those people expect to see or experience? So um, uh, this again, this is where we sort of came it came in. We started to talk to them about um, logistics. I mean, you you know, you guys will know when you go up to a rally on a bike, you know, especially some of the bigger rallies, you particularly you know want to, you want to tag the rider, tag the bike, that sort of stuff. So we 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 helped them through all that, which they said you know just never gave it a thought. Um, and then we talked about the logistics of, of doing the various bits and pieces. And they were saying, no, you know, Sunday we're going to have these all these bands on. And I said, no, 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 whoa, 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 back up. I said, Friday night is when everyone wants to party. They've they've been on the road all day. They've got there. They, you know, they want to have a few beers and they want to they want to listen to the music and they want to have a good crack. So um, so Friday night's going to be sort of arrive tents that sort of stuff, and then live bands. Um, and then late night food obviously will go on till late. So that's the sort of thing that you know. Bikers like to do party hard, and then you want you want you know your pie and chips before you get back to your, your uh, tent. Um, Saturday morning, so we were the, the chapter. So um, we've got some meetings going on between um, Neen Valley um, and, uh, and my head row captains as well. So they're going to get together. They're they're pulling together um, some um, self guided rides and some lead rides. So if people want to get out and see the countryside, so we'll have a selection of things for them to do. So there'll be three or four um, properly led rides with road captains um, setting off at different intervals, different directions, so that um, we keep safe. And then there'll be some self-ride options as people want to just tick a postcode in and go to a location um, and a bit of background on those so people could sign up to them. And then um, live acts again back on stage from sort of um, early afternoon 
uh, and then sort of like headline acts in the evening, um, food, and then breakfast on a Sunday morning, and then people will sort of decant and start to make their way home. What, what, what about now? I know, I know, certainly at, at bike fest when you go to bike fest to do, um, I'm, I'm not sure whether it's a local dealership or whether it's Hog that organise it. The demo rides. We we talked about demo rides, um, and um, I've got um, a meeting because we've um, at our dealership in Watford. We've got a new dealer principal that, that actually started today, um, so I need to to have a chat with him and see what involvement um, that we can have. But certainly, um, before the previous de- dealer principal left, we'd had conversations about getting uh, some demo bikes up there. Um, I even talked about. Um, I know you and. I, we, we we were chatting earlier on before we started recording about the um, the Pan America, but I felt that this was a good opportunity to to get the um, Pan America demo fleet up there, which would have been really cool. Um, and even the guy the guys there said that you know we'll dig a paddock up and you can put a little off road course in if you want. We're quite happy to do that for you. Yeah, um, brilliant. So there's you know there's potential to do these things. Um, I think what we might try and do is to do something special for like early adopters. So you know, we've got loads of trade stands coming. Um, so there'll be stuff there for those. Um, uh, they're looking at t-shirts, um, you know, the usual sort of merchandise stuff that people would want. Um, there's going to be a, a custom show um, with some really good prizes. Um, so that'll all be done on a, on a proper stage and stuff as you would expect. Um yeah, I mean, all the usual stuff. Well, we've, we've talked about chapter games, um, and uh, if we get enough uptake on that, then then we will definitely do that as well. Yeah. Um, so it'll have everything that, that that you would expect from a rally. Um, so it's a good site as well. You know, the, the, the ground is firm. Um, it's, uh, it's nice, level, flat camping. Um, and as I say, there's a lot of undercover areas. So... We're we're looking at um, some of the um, the undercover areas where they use for for warming the horses up and stuff, uh, clearing those, um, and and putting parking in there so that if you want to if you don't want to take your bike over to your tent you can park it on hard standing, lock it up, and so on. Um, there'll be show security all around everywhere all night and all day, um, so people won't be able to get on or off of the site without the the necessary tags and stuff. Good. A couple of um, just questions that are in my mind while listening to you there um just some practical things so presumably if someone wants to park the bike up nearer to them they're going to need to bring a skivvy for for their side stand or is there going to be is it is there where the where the hookups are is that in a in a cement area or a hard standing area uh yeah hookups are on a hard standing area um and uh, that was the last time i was down at the event site that was all being resurfaced um the next week um, so I'm not meeting on the site this week, but we're, we're meeting elsewhere. But um, uh, I'll, we'll have a recce to make sure that that's all been done. But but yeah, there's 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 so much hard standing there; it's untrue. And it's the the, the organisation is um, is Berry Farm Equestrian Events, and um, you know people want to stick a search in on a on a Google on there. You can see the sort of stuff that goes on there. There's so many horses events. One of the questions that people always keep asking me as well is. What about the horses with all of these bikes? Um, obviously, that's a consideration. So, um, uh, again, the um, organisers have said that all the horses and the liveries will all be moved off site for the duration of the festivals, and then uh, and then they'll come back afterwards. So, yeah, I mean, I said before, acorns turn into oak trees. Um, there, there's going to be a lot of learning for the organisers this year. There's, um, you know, there's going to be all sorts thrown at you um, as so far as just sort of the practical fine tuning stuff. Anyone that runs a rally has, ma- has maybe had years and years now of all the little, you know, the little kinks and bends, and they've, they've got all of those straightened out. For people that are going along, obviously they want to make sure their bike's safe, which sounds like it's going to be. They want to eat, they want to drink, they want to dance, they want to go out for a ride. It sounds like it is going to be. All of that, just not on an individual, um, not on an individual rally basis. It's going to be on a on a UK wide basis. Yeah, uh, and then chapters that you know we we try and we're looking at things like to make people belong. So so if chapters want to, you know, if there's ten or fifteen of them coming from a chapter and they want to camp together, then they'll try and accommodate them so that they they can all be together. Um, we're looking at um, they've got obviously being horses and there's always flags and stuff flying. So we're looking at 
uh, flying as many chapter flags along the, the edge of the arena uh, as cool. possible to give people a you know sense of belonging and you know it's, it's their rally too. Um, but they have to or someone from the chapter has to be there to come along and and hand over the flag. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, if they come along, bring a flag. We'll try and get it flying. Um, you know, on one of the flagpoles, so that um, people can see that, that they're there and they're represented. And Jared was saying earlier on about the demo rides. Uh, again, this is probably where the uh, for this year it probably would be an impossible ask, but for next year because you'll have the hindsight of how successful this one's been, or sometime in the future it could become a fantastic platform for obviously the motor company uh, or any dealerships if it wants to drop down a level and dealerships might see this as an opportunity right well i want to go and get my neb in there and 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 you know move a couple of bikes um harley obviously this year have, have committed to um to the demo fleet going out a whole lot more i mean they, they sort of tested the water last year um with a few locations um, but they're taking it out, uh, and that you know, with the with the express reasoning to try and convert people to the brand. So um, you know, um, this is obviously an opportunity to do that. Well, for anyone going to the rally, right? Uh, what accommodation is available? Uh, so you've, you you can camp, um, bring your own tent, and uh, uh, and pitch up. Um, and I think um, I've, I've got a list of the the cost in front of me, but I'll give, I'll give you them separately. Um, so you can camp. Um, if you um, if you don't want to carry a tent on your bike and you fancy um, upgrading a wee bit, then uh, you can have a, a bell tent, which you can um, – a glamping pod or whatever you want to call it. And uh, that, that comes with a, with a bed and a double bed inside the duvet, a bit of a carpet and a light, and, uh, uh, and obviously it's pre-pitched for you, so you don't have to worry about that when you get there. Lovely. Um, or, or you can um, – uh, there's uh, several hotels nearby, um, and um, I believe they've negotiated some rates with the hotels, and they give they'll certainly give you a list of them, and uh, and they'll be bringing a, a minibus round, which will gather you up, bring you to the event, uh, and take you back and deposit you back home again once you've finished, which um, may be some people's preference. I'll tell you what we'll do, Martin. We're gonna make life easier for you here. Is uh, anyone that's listening and anyone that's watching. Um, as part of the show notes on the Hogpod website and for this episode, we will include uh, links and lists and prices and phone numbers and all that kind of thing, basically to try and make it as easy as possible for any of you to um, find out where you want to stay and how you can go about doing that. So, uh, Fantastic. That will be a lot easier for you, I think. Yeah. So back to you, Martin. This year, the calendar this year for by the uh, for by the big rally. Uh, what's what are your plans for the this year for the chapter? Um, this year, um, we've got uh, quite a few trips planned. We've got people obviously going to um, uh, to the one twentieth. Uh, we've got a couple of members that are doing um, both Milwaukee and uh, and the European. So um, uh, so they're going to have some tales to tell. Um, we've got quite a lot of uh, weekends away and stuff that we tend to do. Um, we're uh, we're obviously going to the cider rally this year. I think I'm taking, uh, I think I'm up to about sixty bikes down there um, in two lots. So um, we we'll support that because obviously uh, it's Bridgewater's um, it's their celebration year. Uh, so um, we we're, we're looking forward to that one, and um, uh, which I believe is a sellout. Yes, I understand that. Yep, one hundred percent. In fact, um, obviously, well, uh, by the time you're all watching this, it will be Sunday. But at the moment, we are ten days away from the cider rally starting. Yeah, yeah, we um, we started. That was that was a uh, just like uh, as Jared says, that was the slow burn. We started with about two of us going, um, and then it grew and grew and grew. And then last year, I think I took forty bikes down. Um, I know I've got um, forty five with me for stopping for lunch on the way down in devices uh, and then on down to the rally. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, and then uh, I'm, I'm looking at planning something for Europe, but um, we, we were looking, we, we've, we had a place where we used to go quite regularly in Germany. Um, and, uh, and unfortunately the hotel, you closed the hotel down after, um, after COVID. Um, so um, we're doing a, a trip to France. Uh, we've got a French weekend coming up. We go to a, a specific hotel there. Um, and they make us very, very welcome. So I think I've got uh, 22 bikes coming with me on that trip. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're getting about, and we're um, 
certainly going to uh, see a few of the other rallies. I think we've got some going up to um, to the Thunder in the Glens as well. Um, I think that's that's one that you've definitely got to do. Um, I haven't taken my uh, my other half up there yet, so um, I've told her that that's probably one we'll do. I think she needs to she needs to sample that at least once in your life anyway. Well, Martin, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you tonight. Um, do you want to give the rally one final plug before we go? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's it's chapters together or, or fields of thunder, twenty um, first to twenty third of July, uh, and it's at uh, Berry Farm in Slapton. Um, if you're ch- and, and let me just stress as well, you don't have to be a chapter member to to be there. You ride a Harley, you ride a you ride a Harley, you will be made very 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 welcome. Um, and if you're thinking about joining a chapter. It might be a good opportunity to come along and see what chapters get up to and what it's all about um, and the benefits of being in a chapter. So if you if you buy a Harley um, and you don't join a chapter, I think it's a bit like buying the uh, the frame and not putting any wheels on it, to be honest. Um, it, it's, you know, I can't stress that enough. Um, it, you, you, it's a whole new world uh, and a whole new list of friends and everybody's a brother or sister. Brilliant. And Martin, listen, I know how busy you're going to be with the organisation of this, as well as your own life, as well as your chapter life, uh, and all the other plans. So, again, thank you so much for uh, taking time to join us tonight. Hopefully, there's been a lot of, load of questions uh, answered there. Um, we were going to include loads of links, all the posters, as much detail as we can into the show notes. So, uh, for now, from us, uh, Martin, the very best of luck. I'm sure that you will do absolutely fine. And I'm equally sure that uh, many, many people listening here will be supporting the event to make sure that it gets off to a great start so we can build on it for 2024, 2025 and, uh, and onwards. Listen, guys, thank you so much for, for giving us the opportunity to, to talk about this and to talk about chapters and stuff. Um, and keep doing what you're doing because it, it's brilliant. It's brilliant work and it's needed um, and it's a it's another link that keeps us all talking. 100%. Brilliant. Martin, best of luck. Cheers, guys. Take care.